Welcome back to the Gen 20 Podcast. I'm Nicole. And I'm Marina. Today we're talking about fake breaks and how not really resting will just shove you into burnout mode. So I'm going to take the reins on this one, Nicole, because (laughs) I am the queen of fake breaks and it's not really something to be proud of. Um, So a fake break to me at least, is when you distract yourself from really feeling what you're feeling or when you like half-ass rest. So for example, I often watch TV at night, most people do, but I work while I do it because I'm thinking, oh, I'm I'm watching TV, I'm on a break, but I'm working. I'm on my phone, I'm checking email, I'm doing things. So my brain is now engaged as twice as much as when I'm really, when really I'm at the point in the day where my brain should just be like turned off. And it's, I feel like it's this incessant need to be productive and we're so focused on production and being productive that we forget to take care of ourselves. But but like we can't produce all the time. We can't work all the time. And if that's the only way for us to be surviving financially, then the system is broken. So it's like not us. But mm-hmm. it's really hard to know that, right? Because for me, when I'm I have all these goals and my when I'm not achieving what point I want to be achieving, my brain says, oh, it's because you're not working hard enough. And it's like false. So when <laughs> I when I worked at one of my last jobs, I worked 40 hours a week full time and was paid so little I could barely pay the rent. So I was freelancing and working part time with Gen 20. I was working like 65 hours a week total and on the weekends and it started really affecting my life. And I thought, I'm just not working hard enough. Really? It was that I was really underpaid at my full-time job and that was why I was like struggling. But anyway, these fake breaks, we think we're helping ourselves out, but we're actually not. And so Nicole, I want to talk to you about this because I think you're pretty good at taking breaks and you're pretty good at rest and I've learned from you. So how how does resting help you as a full-time business owner, full-time entrepreneur, and full-time mom of two little boys? And now a word from our sponsor. Do you ever feel like you're stuck on the island of misfit careers? Like, everyone around you seems to have their career together, but here you are in a soul-sucking job for what feels like the hundredth time. Why is it so hard to find work that makes you happy? My friend, you are not alone in feeling this way. Let me introduce you to Serena and get me out of this job. Get Me Out of This Job is a career coaching program that helps you find confidence and clarity in the next steps of your career. Serena helps you build a career around your life instead of feeling like you have to build your life around your career. No more diving into jobs that aren't the right fit for you anymore. No more living on the aisle of misfit careers. And the best part? Mention Gen 20 and get 10% off your coaching package. Head to getmeoutofthisjob.co to learn more or follow her on Instagram at getmeoutofthisjob. That's a lot of full times all in one sentence for sure. Uh Uh-oh. But I don't know. I I definitely do my fair share of multitasking, of course, which is – you know, stressful at times. Um, But I really also try to make it a priority to do nothing and to really honor my own need to do nothing when I feel like that's what my body is telling me, when my mind is telling me to do, what the universe might might be telling me to do. Um, Because one thing for me is when I start making a lot of mistakes is that I know I'm doing too much. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, just little mistakes on things I don't normally make mistakes on, like whether it's like setting up my like content calendar, scheduling posts, like missing errors and things or catching missing errors. That sounds weird. Um, putting errors and things where I would normally catch them. Um, but all in all, like I try to make my working hours as productive as possible. And I think, We're always talking about this like balance between work and rest, right? But really it's like a sliding scale, Mm -hmm. truly. Like sometimes I have to put more time into working because it's just a busy season. I have a lot of commitments at this time. Like, you know, there's a variety of things, but sometimes I do need to rest more and I have to honor that uh, by like separating myself from my work, which is really difficult because I work from home. I've worked, always worked from home and I don't, I've never set up these boundaries where it's like, these are my work hours and these are my personal hours, not work hours. And also when you're a mom, you also have like more responsibilities where you need to give more of yourself to more people, which, you know, Mm -hmm. is fine. 
Um, but one of my like really hard boundaries is that I don't fill up my schedule with calls. Um, I, not that I hate calls, but like I hate calls. I hate calls. Um, yeah, they need to be very like social calls. That's fine with me. But like when I have work calls, like they need to have very clear objectives. We need to be getting to the point quickly and moving on because I only have so many hours of my day to dedicate to work. Like that's just where I'm at in my life right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and as a more introverted person, it really does throw off my workflow to have a call because I have to like get ready for it and like hype myself up for this call. Like I'm not the kind of person who can just like jump on, on and off a call. Like I need a transition period and Mm -hmm. calls can often like drain me a lot more than just working. So if something doesn't need to be a call, I don't take it. That's a very hard boundary for me. And I've turned down things because I don't want to be on calls and meetings constantly. Um, Like I almost turned down a pretty big contract recently because they said that something was required and I was like, I can't make that work. And they had another alternative, thankfully. But yeah, that was a really big contract that I would have walked away from because it didn't align with what I need for Mm. my work to do for me. Um. So what about your boundaries, Marina? What do you have boundaries around? Listen, I need to have more boundaries. They are in an ebb and flow state right now as I figure out mm-hmm. my best working self. But I I tend to – I don't know if it's because I'm a recovering people pleaser or just because I'm such a curious, excited to do things person. But I say yes to too many things. Like mm-hmm. my knee-jerk reaction when someone presents me something is, oh, that sounds awesome. Yes. And then when I lead up to it, I'm like, I don't have time for this. I need to put more boundaries around my time. So Mm -hmm. I'm in a position or in like a flow state of figuring out new boundaries. (laughs) But for the most part, one thing I've really been adamant about is setting hard end times to calls because like you, I'm introverted and it takes so much out of me. So I try to communicate via email and I try to communicate very clearly via email so that everything is resolved shortly and not needing a call. Mm -hmm. I also – I take big breaks during the middle of the day. So I figured Mm -hmm. out what I – one thing I really love about being my own boss is that I can work when I have the burst of energy to work. So I often wake up at 8 or wake up at 7.30 and I work from like 8.30 till noon and then I take a long break for lunch and – taking a walk or unwinding or downtime or whatever, and then work again from like three to seven because that is my zone of energy. And I've had to, I've had to be really strict on social calls because a lot of my friends and family are still on the East coast, but I'm over here in California and they'll call me at the end of their day, which is right in the middle of my work day. And for so long, I would pick up and say like, okay, I can chat, but I'm working. And then finally, I realized like, no, I'm I'm just going to tell you, like, hey, it's I'm still working. I can talk to you at 8.30 your time in the evening, but I can't talk before that. Mm-hmm. And that ha- was a hard – that was hard for me to do at first because I had a lot of feelings around it. But I think recognizing what you need takes time and takes iterations because – like you were saying, mm-hmm. as a mom and a business owner and all these things, it your needs are going to fluctuate through the seasons and through the day. And so I'm I'm trying my best to recognize what I need and take it day by day. Mm-hmm. Like last week, last week Nicole at the beginning it was the beginning of November. Nicole and I, who knows when this is launching, but mm-hmm. <laughs> but it won't be in November. But at the beginning of November, Nicole and I had this monthly meeting, and I, we were really jazzed. We made a list. And for all the things we wanted to do in the next four weeks. And then my brain looked at the list and said, great, let's do it all this week. (laughs) And um, let me tell you, it did not work out for me. I had to take a day off because I just burned myself into the ground. And that's when I re- that's when I started realizing, oh, I take a lot of fake breaks, which is why I feel tired all the time. Mm. A word from our sponsor. Did you know that 64% of consumers bought a product after watching a branded video? It's no surprise since video posts get 1,200% more shares on social media than text and photos alone. 
Angela Wolf Video is a certified woman-owned video production company. They create videos to give personality to your content. Based on the East Coast, Angela Wolf Video works with brands nationwide to create videos for digital marketing, live streaming, and online courses. For a limited time, Angela Wolf Video is offering a free 30-minute coaching session to Gen 20 listeners. Go to bit.ly slash AWV Gen 20 to schedule your free session or visit them online at www.angelawolfvideo.com and mention Gen 20. So yeah, I think learning, also learning to be unproductive is really important and I'm something I'm actively in where you don't have, like, like you need, you need to be unproductive in order to be productive. Mm-hmm. Like we're humans. We're not machines. Mm-hmm. We aren't meant to produce. Yeah. Like, yeah, constantly. Like we – I think like kind of what you're saying is like normalizing rest and knowing that it's okay to not be doing things all the time and you don't always have to be doing something that's getting you to a certain place. Like you don't have to be working on a personal goal. Like you don't have to be working on a professional goal. Like you can just do something that you enjoy for the sake of doing it and you don't need to have something else to accompany you along with that. Like you don't need to be working while you watch TV. You don't need to be like texting friends while you watch TV or reading a book or something. Like I feel like the busier my schedule is, the harder it is for me to like turn off other things when I'm trying to rest which is it's like a work in progress like some days I'm really good at it other days I'm really not but again it's like kind of like that sliding scale of different things have different priorities at different times but one of these things like talking about rest um another like hard boundary I have is kind of around sleep Mm -hmm. um sleep is very essential for me I'm not my best self if I'm not getting like eight to nine hours of sleep yeah I need nine hours for my best brain Yeah, I am a lot of sleep kind of person. And at this point in time, my second son, he's eight months old, and he's still waking up through the night off and on. Like some nights he'll sleep the whole night, no problem. Some nights he will wake up once or twice, like, you know, teething, developmental things, whatever. But I'm not always getting eight hours every night. So um, the nights he does sleep through the night, I'm able to like wake up early. Like I'm also a jump into work right away kind of person. Like I like to wake up and just work for hours and then do other things in the day. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, so like those days like work really well for me because if he wakes up at 530, I'm like, cool, feed you, put you back to bed. And then I'm off to start my day. The rest of my house is still sleeping. It's wonderful. Everything's quiet. I love it. Yes, I love mornings. Like, then other days where he might be up at, like, 1 or he wakes up at 4, you know, his schedule's a little off. I'm way more tired. I can't get up and start work at 5.30. Like, I just – it just doesn't work for me Um, those days. So, like, I have to be more gentle with myself and realize that, like, I do need to sleep and honor this need for rest, like, even if that does take away – from work time because, I mean, my husband starts work at a time, which we kind of switch over point parent duties at that point. And, I mean, I still – I'm still breastfeeding my son now. So, you know, I still have other people's schedules to work around as I'm yeah, trying to Unfortunately, say. your husband cannot contribute into yeah. that action. Yeah, it's okay. I don't mind. Um, I don't mind. But, um, yeah, it's like I know those days I have to, like, choose rest instead of choosing work is what I'm trying to say. And it's like being – flexible with it. And I think in an ideal world, we'd have our ideal schedules every day, but that's just not how things work. And I think you have to be really honest with yourself and truly separate work and personal time. And kind of on this note, something Marina and I have been discussing heavily this year, I feel, is um, the time Mm -hmm. to spend on Instagram and social media. Um, This comes up a lot for us. Yeah, I think it's something we end up scrolling through a lot, like whether it's Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Um, And I love connecting with people. Like I love talking with people on there and seeing what other people are up to, but it really does take a lot for me. So kind of as we're having this conversation, um, I'm about to delete Instagram off my phone for the first time in like since I downloaded Instagram probably. In like 2008. Um, Yeah, so I'm very hopeful that this goes – well, I think it will go well for me. 
Um, and then a couple weeks, maybe I'll re-download it or something. But yeah, it's kind of stressful. Yeah, I took a Instagram break a month or two ago. I don't even remember, um, which means I need to do another one. But I d- deleted the phone from my I, – it's like I didn't fully delete the phone, the app from my phone, but I deleted the – what the heck is that called? Where it's like it was still exists on my phone, but the like icon isn't embedded on my phone. I'm I need more coffee. No, but so you. I, had, I don't know what it's called either, but I get what you're saying. When you when you like click on it and hover, it asks you if you want to delete that the app completely or just delete from your home. Oh, from your home screen. Mm-hmm. So I deleted it from my home screen, which meant I had to go and search for it if I wanted to use it, which really helped. Um, but then I I think also just. I communicated, I posted on Instagram, my business Instagram, and said, hey, I'm taking a break for the week. I told Nicole I was taking a break. And those two parameters, because those are like my other business, Instagram, and then working with Nicole on Instagram, those are the two reasons I'm on Instagram the most professionally. Communicating that and then walking away, I could actually relax and take a break. And it was so great. I had so many more hours in my day, both logistically and mentally where I wasn't burnt out early in the morning because I I like to work in the mornings because that's when I'm the most focused but that's also while the caffeine is still cursing through my blood (laughs) as soon as the caffeine wears off and it's after 2 p.m I struggle Mm -hmm. but I think setting those boundaries and is so helpful but I I also think we 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 were the generation of FOMO right fear of missing out and I if you accept that, yeah, you're going to miss out on some things, but it's going to be because you're doing other things, that's really helpful. Mm-hmm. So I I try to remember I can't do everything all at once. I can't be producing all the time. I can't be the like point person for everyone all the time. I- I'm allowed to take breaks. I think that mm-hmm. is another thing is just to not feel bad when you need rest. Yeah. We shouldn't burnout should not be a badge of honor. Working crazy hours and burning the candle at both ends should not be something we're aiming to do. Mm-hmm. We should like let ourselves rest. Yeah. And I think on a final note, like you're not missing out, you're experiencing exactly what you need to be experiencing. Exactly. And I think the more we can accept that and lean into that, the easier it will be to take true breaks and actually get the rest we deserve. Amen. Well, thanks so much for listening. We hope this encourages you to take real breaks and um, let us know what you think. Feel free to email us or DM us on Instagram. One of us will maybe be on. No promises. Um, (laughs) But thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I think that went well.